Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Comic Book Showcase. My name is Jamie Hare. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about the Season 3 premiere of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. A lot went down. We introduced a, a really new bad character, although he's uh, in the comic books. His name is Lash. Uh, he's only been around for about a year, and then a lot's gone down. So, uh, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the uh, episode uh, 1 of Season 3 of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. yet, we're about to ruin all that for you. <laughs> so... Um, does anyone, uh, bef before I just start spouting out, um, uh, you know, plot lines, uh, does anyone have any strong opinions about anything they really loved or hated in that episode? I, I really liked the beginning of the episode where they, you know, you know they were uh, chasing the guy through the street and these things were blowing up and all of a sudden S.H.I.E.L.D. comes to the rescue and they just kind of come out of nowhere as these, you know, like basically guardian angels to this guy and they have this crazy tech, they have this like padded room that just kind of drops from the sky and then the guy climbs into it and it shoots up into space. And I think for me, that's like the shield I want to see. I want to see shield like rushing into these crazy situations with like million dollar tech, you know, just crazy amounts of, you know, science and gizmos. And I want to see them, you know, just like blowing shit up and, you know, rescuing people. This like hiding in like abandoned warehouses and running with a skeleton crew is not the shield I want to watch on TV. Uh, I was gonna say my favorite thing so far. My fa I'm loving everything they're doing with the Inhumans, mostly because my favorite thing about Agents of Shield is watching my Marvel uh, fan friends cry. Uh, I love how upset everybody is getting that the Inhumans are slowly replacing the X Men. Being a Marvel fanboy myself, I'd have to say I really enjoy what they're doing with it because they obviously can't do mutants, so it's good that they've been able to try and start traversing into that kind of territory, but with calling the humans. Because, I mean, it allows for the tie-in for the movie in, what, 2019? I mean, there's still a long way out, but um, I, I really enjoy, like, everything with this. I think, I agree, the, ent the intro was amazing. Um, just, like, flipping out tech, things dropping down, people shooting back up. It's, it was all really kind of awesome. Um, although, I'm not sure if I like the style of the new ship. It was kind of cheesy. Well, Phil Coulson was happy enough with his new toy, as he said. But, uh, yeah, you're, to your point, um, it's interesting how they are wading in now to mutant territory and without using the word mutant because they can't legally, uh, they've found lots of new creative ways to, to basically say the same thing. They were talking to the new character they introduced. <coughs> Uh, Joy Gutierrez, um, who um, melts metal, but they were basically saying you had a bio, what was it, a biomedical event, or a biomorphic event, or something like that? <laughs> yeah, you weren't mutated. No, 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 that would be illegal. <coughs> and copyright infringement. You were in inhumitated. Ooh, inhumitated. Let's copyright that. So what? Uh, so obviously, the, this new character is going to be developing uh, some sort of relationship with Sky, who is now Daisy Johnson, which is retconned. Uh, well, no, Daisy Johnson is Quake, um, and they've kind of slipped Sky into that role. Um, she appears to be, you know, going to have uh, some relationship with this. Um, I forget his name. Uh, it's uh, Juan Juan Pablo Rava, who actually is in this new show called Narcos, which I hear is absolutely fantastic. I feel like people are getting really, really mad about the whole uh, Daisy Johnson reveal on Sky, which to me is silly because with so many uh, superhero shows, you just kind of got to take it for granted that we're seeing characters very similar to the ones we love in the comics, even if they're not going to do the exact same characterization. And Sky really is a, a very different, her own character, just with Daisy Johnson's name. And I think that everything they've done with her so far has been very fun. But I know some people who are angry that we're not getting, like, classic Secret Warriors Daisy. And how do we feel about the, the change of not just characterizations of, of people, but characterizations of... Um, uh, events. So, like, for instance, the way that Lash came about in the comics in 2014 was the Terrigen Bomb was actually set off by Black Bolt, who's the king of the Inhumans, but that's obviously not specifically what's happening here, and they're kind of taking similar events where Terrigen Mist is going to, you know, transform what I think they, they call it a, a complete Terrigenesis is the frame they were using, but, um, you know, it's everything's like a pastiche or just a, um, you know, a slightly different modified version of, of what's happened in the comics. How do we feel about that? Do you, would you rather it stayed closer to the original material? A I complete terror genesis, but that would make all mutants on Earth sterile. 
<laughs> oh god, that was awesome. Um, I really enjoy the way that they're doing the show right now because I kind of see it as like just another take on this kind of like these stories and these characters and just like in movies it's not going to necessarily stick right to the comic books you can't expect that it's different mediums it's like when someone takes a character and puts it into like a 1900s or whatever it's just it's it's not the same thing it's just the way that they're bringing that character to that medium it's worth mentioning also that you wouldn't want it to be exactly the same. All the people who get really mad about that, I always feel like, like what what do you want? Like an exact like shot for shot, panel for panel recreation of something you've already read? Exactly. Like that would be boring. And you're not you're not going to impress everybody anyways because everyone has their own relationship with these characters, the way that they first met them, the like their favorite uh, issue that this character did this or interacted with this person this way, and if you were to take everybody and sit them down and get them to give their portrayal of what the perfect episode would be, it wouldn't be matched across the board, and that's exactly what you're getting here, is you're getting the directors, the writers, their, their perception, and it's just, it's unrealistic to think that, you know, we should have this one structure that's the same as the books. I'm not going to change that character at all. Can't do that. That's just horrible. F fair enough. And and let's uh, let's kind of jump off that topic for a second. And um, there have been a number of characters that have been introduced in the show. I mean, there's some some ones that are, are you know like um, they have uh, Mockingbird or you know uh, Bobby Morse in there now. But uh, characters that are sort of either net new like Ward or um, Rosalind Price. What do we think about Rosalind Price? Uh, interesting character, you know, just making a bit of a splash right now. I'm indifferent. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think the same thing might, you know, like, what what did she do in that first episode to really impress us with, you know, like, her character? I love the actress, but I feel like we need to see more of her before she really makes her mark on the show. I mean, a lot of the focus is going to be on the Inhuman characters and Coulson because he's got that... Um, the kind of a mysterious crowd around him, and you know, like it, some of these side characters that really have no—I mean, like they're interesting characters, but they, they don't have the, the powers. They're gonna call it, kind of fall to the side. I think I think it's worthy to note that um, uh, although we aren't terribly impressed with her actions so far, um, Coulson sure seems to be. Uh, so I mean, that obviously speaks wonders about uh, I think her future in the show uh, in terms of impact she will make. Um, they're, they're certainly foreshadowing it anyway. Yeah. Their interaction was phenomenal. What about Lash? What did you think of Lash? I enjoy Lash, but I don't know whether it was time to bring him in right in the beginning. <clears throat> you could have had them talk about how there's a bunch of Inhumans that have gone missing that neither side knows where they are. And you could have had maybe him right at the very end just kind of shown, but not like, I didn't know. And I had been spoiled because I knew he was coming to the show, and I knew that they had put him into this episode because of something on Facebook somebody posted, and I hate them for it. But when I saw, actually, in the show, it, I, was, I wasn't overwhelmed, I wasn't underwhelmed, I was just kind of whelmed. So uh, are these types of monsters? Uh, are these types of uh, are these types of monsters scarier when you don't see them? Like you know the, the sort of classic horror movie villain where they spend more time off screen than on. Is that what you've oh, seen better 100%. for life? Absolutely. I mean, they could have played that up a whole lot more. Like it just I I figured we were gonna get like when he so spoilers if anyone's still watching this and hasn't seen the episode yet. When he reached out and grabbed the what I believe was a guard and was holding him up with, like, sucking the shit out of him, I thought that that was the most we were going to get to see at that point because hopefully everybody would just fucking run when they see some guy getting murdered in front of them. But they, there was just too much there. It was too much released too quickly. Fair enough. I'll, I'll buy that. And, uh, uh, Billy, it looks like you wanted to say something. I was going to say, it also, it feels 
like struggling with the Inhumans because it feels sort of like their hands are tied again. Like that was the biggest problem with season one for Agents of Shield was that they were restricted by the MCU and that until the MCU dropped that huge bomb in the series of uh, Winter Soldier happening, Shield getting destroyed, they were restricted to stories that couldn't really go anywhere until they hit that place. And once they were allowed to do that and allowed to actually do what they wanted, it like it went nuts. It went crazy. In this case, they're spending so much time setting up the Inhumans, but they're not allowed to actually do anything really cool with them. Like, to me, the most exciting thing about the Inhumans is those real... ...is like uh, Black Bolt, Karnak, Gorgon, that, that each have very own, uh, very strong points of view, very distinctive visual looks, and... Lash has been cool, but I feel like a lot of the Inhumans that we're getting are just like like hot guy with simple powers, and he generally wants to do the right thing, but is unsure of himself. They don't feel like huge, vibrant, distinctive characters to me a lot of the time, and I don't know, it's sort of like going back to the X-Men comparison, it's like if they were like, yeah, that's right, like X-Men are coming to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and then they were like, yeah, we have, we got Beak, we got Polymer, we got uh, tattoo. We got keratin. As as much fun as they are to see, it, I just I want them to be able to do the real thing, and I know they can't. What I wouldn't mind seeing them do is bringing in more mystic stuff. I mean, we know Doctor Strange movie is coming out fairly soon, even before the uh, Inhumans movie is coming out. Why can't we so, see more of that in this? Um, it would be like, awesome. I mean, it's not a foreign concept in TV land to have this, and I don't think audiences would, like, be astonished that there is, like, mystic arts going on. Fair enough. Uh, all right, one last question, and then we're going to start wrapping it up. Um, how do we? How does everyone feel about the situation, how it was left, and how we now, the again, spoiler alert, what we now know about Simmons uh, in terms of the relationship of Fitz and Simmons? Do we like that? Do we hate that? Is Are we tired of that? We're, I'm kind of tired of it. What do you guys think? Oh, God, the will they, won't they for Fitz and Simmons has just gotten... I mean, it had a couple of nice moments last uh, season, but overall, it, it just feels like a plot tumor at this point. I'm going to disagree a little bit, and I'm going to say that <laughs> just seeing that, that scene at the end where he kind of finally has that you know realization that Nothing he does is going to bring her back was pretty powerful, I thought, you know, where he was just pounding the monolith and screaming. And I think, you know, if that would have been the end of it, I would have liked it better. Just kind of get that one dramatic, powerful, moving moment and then kind of be done with it. But now that we know that she survived and she's somewhere across the universe, you know, it's not the end of that storyline. And it, it kind of loses that impact that it would have had otherwise. I'd, I'd like to see with the way that they've left it right now with him believing her to be dead and her being left stranded on an alien planet that um, when they do end up meeting, they're two different people at that point. He's moved on, accepted her death, you know, maybe he's with someone else, and she's grown into, like, a different character. Because I feel that this is the point where they could take that character and, like, do whatever they want with it. It's essentially a, a rewrite that they could do right at the moment. I'm not saying that the character needs to be rewritten in any, in any means, but just saying it gives them um, character expansion. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Like, she's kind of been a little bit of a naive character to this point, kind of shielded behind, you know, the science. Of shielded. <laughs> shielded by the science, and uh, she hasn't Blinded. had to deal with, like, the spy stuff necessarily, and now, you know, being alone and hunted on an alien world kind of maybe hardens her character and can kind of take her in a totally different direction if they want to. Yeah, that's, I guess that's my problem with it, is that it's not, the the fault of that storyline isn't that they're individually not interesting characters without the romance, it's that I feel like they're both very interesting characters, and because so much of their dramatic time on screen is spent devoted to that relationship, I get very sick of it very quickly. Whereas there are plenty of other things they do that are very interesting to me. Again, uh, last season, the thing with them deciding whether or not they want to act actually uh, this, yeah, that's because specifically, I feel like Simmons has the potential to be such an interesting character, but ninety percent of her screen time is just like, oh, Fitz, I don't like you like that, and ninety percent of her screen time is just 
trying to not be interested in a thing. And, and on that point, um, actually, we are out of time. Um, so thank you very much for joining us this week. Um, we'll leave uh, a question for you, and that question is, uh, what characters from the Marvel Universe that they're allowed to use would you like to see make an appearance on Season 3 of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Thank you to Mike and Kyle and Billy, as always. See you guys next episode.